Gentlemen, good evening. This is TV7 Israel News broadcasting to you from Jerusalem. And in today's top stories, Palestinian Islamists have resumed firing rockets towards the southern communities of Israel. The Russian initiated ceasefire in the Syrian city of Aleppo, aimed at allowing the United Nations to deliver humanitarian aid to the rebel held eastern part of the city ended on Saturday night as the air forces of both Russia and the Syrian military resumed bombing the city. Turkish-backed rebels clashed with the Western-backed SDF rebels as part of an intensified effort by Ankara to drive out both Islamic State and Kurdish militants from Syrian territory adjacent to its border. Palestinian Islamists have resumed firing rockets toward the southern communities of Israel. The rocket fire, which occurred early this morning during the Jewish holiday of Simchat Torah, which commemorates the completion of the biblical reading in synagogues around the world, prompted rocket alert sirens across the Shah Negev Regional Council. The IDF spokesman's unit noted that following a search, it believed the rockets directed at Israel had not exploded in Israeli territory, and most likely fell within the Palestinian enclave. Nevertheless, the IDF noted that the Israeli Air Force conducted several sorties in which it targeted terror infrastructure belonging to the Islamist Hamas organization which controls the Gaza Strip. The IDF reiterated that it views the Hamas organization as solely responsible for any attacks emanating from the Palestinian enclave. Now to the ongoing conflict in Israel's northern neighbor, the Russian initiated ceasefire aimed at allowing the United Nations to deliver humanitarian aid to the rebel-held eastern part of Aleppo while establishing a safe route for civilians to exit the embattled city ended on Saturday night as the air forces of both Russia and the Syrian military resumed bombing the city. The United Nations had hoped that the ceasefire, which lasted some four consecutive days, would allow medical evacuations from the city, but said a lack of security guarantees and facilitation were preventing aid workers from taking advantage of the ceasefire. The main reason, however, was the fact that rebels in the besieged city have said they cannot accept the Russian ceasefire, which according to them did nothing to alleviate the situation of those who choose to remain in the rebel-held part of Aleppo, and believe it is part of a government policy to purge cities of political opponents. Meanwhile, in the northern part of the Syrian province of Aleppo, Turkish-backed rebels clashed with the western-backed SDF militia. The clashes are as part of an effort by Turkish-backed forces to press on the Islamic State-held town of El Bab in the northeastern part of Aleppo, in an intensified effort by Ankara to drive out both Islamic State and Kurdish militants from Syrian territory adjacent to its border. In an inauguration ceremony for a state university in the Turkish city of Bursa, President Recep Tayyip Erdogan declared that his country is willing to cooperate with its Western allies, so long no Kurdish organizations that are backed by the US-led coalition partake in the advance. Coalition etmeye hazır olurlarsa Rakka'da da Daesh'a karşı gereğini yapacağız. Ama PYD ile veya YPG ile beraber değil ha. Amerika koalisyon güçleri beraber terör örgütlerini yanımıza almayacağız. Backed by Turkish special forces, tanks and airstrikes, a group of rebels fighting under the banner of the Free Syrian Army crossed into northern Syria in August and took the border town of Yarablus from the Islamic State largely unopposed. The Turkish-backed rebels have since extended their gains and now control an area of roughly 1,270 square kilometers, which is equal to some 500 square miles in northern Syria. While well, Turkey's initial focus was on driving the Islamic State from Yarablus, much of its efforts have been spent on stopping the advance of the U.S.-backed Syrian Kurdish militias, a fact which has caused tension between Washington and Ankara. Now to the ongoing conflict in Iraq. Turkish Prime Minister Bin Ali Dirim said his country is prepared to take measures in its eastern neighbor because it was not satisfied by promises from Washington and Baghdad 
that Kurdish militants and Shiite militias will not partake in the current fighting to retake the Islamic State-controlled city of Mosul. Irak'tan gelecek her türlü terör tehdidine karşı, her türlü mülteci akınına karşı ve bölgede zuhur edecek bir mezhep savaşı ve katliamlara karşı Türkiye asla kayıtsız olamaz. Gerektiği anda müdahale etmekten de zerre kadar tereddüt göstermeyeceğiz. Bunu da açıkça ifade ettik. Bu konuda da hiç kimsenin vaazı nasihatine ihtiyacımız yok. Turkey is keen to take part in an offensive to take back Mosul from the Islamic State. It fears the use of Iranian-backed Shiite militias, which the Iraqi army has relied on in the past, will stoke sectarian unrest. Nevertheless, Iraqi Prime Minister Haider al-Abadi declined an offer from Turkey to take part in the battle for Mosul, stressing during a meeting with U.S. Defense Secretary Ash Carter in Baghdad that the Iraqis themselves will handle the capture of the last Islamic State stronghold in their country. نحن حريصون على علاقة طيبة مع تركيا حريصون أن لا يكون هناك تصادم بين تركيا وبين العراق لأن تركيا بلد جار وحريصون عن استمرار العمل مع تركيا ولكن معركة الموصل معركة عراقية والذي يخوضها الذي خطط لها وينفذها العراقيون وبالتالي أعلم أن الأتراك يريدون أن يشتركوا في هذه المعركة نحن نقول لهم شكرا هذه سيحسمها العراقيون والعراقيون سيحررون الموصل ويحررون باقي المناطق Following a meeting with the Iraqi Prime Minister, U.S. Secretary of Defense Ash Carter landed in the north Iraqi city of Erbil, where he was greeted at the airport by the Prime Minister of the Kurdistan Regional Government, Nechirvan Barazani, before going to meet the President of Iraq's Kurdistan region, Mas'ud Barazani. The visit by the American top defense official is meant to show Washington's support for the Iraqi and Kurdish forces in their battle against the Islamic State, as well as assess progress in the campaign to recapture Mosul. The U.S.-led coalition against the Islamic State will provide the forces on the ground air support, and roughly 5,000 U.S. military personnel are in Iraq to assist the local forces. Now to Lebanon, where the leader of the Iranian-backed Hezbollah organization, Syed Hassan Nasrallah, announced the door to electing a president was wide open and his members of parliament would vote for the group's ally, Michel Anoun, at a parliamentary session to be held at the end of October. Lebanon has been without a president for more than two years as part of a political crisis that has resulted in breakdown in many basic services and concerns about the country's stability. لانتخاب الرئيس كتلة الوفاء للمقاومة ستحضر هذه الجلسة إن شاء الله بكامل أعضائها وستنتخب العماد ميشيل عون رئيس التكتل رئيس تكتل التغيير والإصلاح رئيسا الجمهورية وإذا بيقبل قانون المجلس إذا بيقبل قانون المجلس إنه نواب كتلة الوفاء والمقاومة يفتحوا الورقة هيك قدام الكاميرات لكل العالم يشوفوا انه مكتوب اسم ميشيل عون محفظ الالقاب انا بطلب كنا عم نناقش هذا الموضوع مع الاخوه Lebanon's former Prime Minister Saad al khariri said on Thursday of last week he would back the Christian leader Anun to be president Khariri stressed that his endorsement was a political settlement for the benefit of the whole country The parliament will convene on October 31st for a session to elect the president the 46 such sittings since the term of the last president, Michel Suleiman, expired in 2014. Each of the previous sittings failed to gain the two-thirds quorum needed for a vote. Per Lebanon's basic law, the position of president must be filled by a Maronite Christian. Thank you for watching us. Keep praying for the peace of Israel and the peace of Jerusalem. I'm Jonathan Hassan, have a Erev Tov and Shavua Tov, and we will see you again tomorrow at the same time. In order to donate to TV7 Israel News, 
please follow these simple steps. First, press the Donate logo, located at the bottom left side of TV7 Israel News Facebook page, or on the Donate tab at the head of the page. Then insert the amount you'd like to donate, and fill in your credit card information. Just like this. And press Review Donation and Continue. After reviewing your donation details, please press Donate to finalize your donation. That's it! Your donation is now complete, and an email with your donation details has been sent to your email address. You can also print your donation receipt by pressing the link here. Thank you for supporting TV7 Israel News.